This presentation is going to be about spin qubits in graphene quantum dots. Quantum bits, or qubits for short, form the foundation for quantum computation. They are the quantum analog to the classical bits of ones and zeros, and can be created using any quantum two-level system. One of the most promising candidates for a qubit is a single electron spin in a quantum dot, where the leading architecture uses gallium arsenide or aluminum gallium arsenide as the host. For the sake of time, I'm going to assume that you already have an understanding of spin qubits and quantum dots of other leading semiconductors, and will instead focus solely on graphene quantum dots and how they physically differ from those of previously studied semiconductors. The methods previously studied in gallium arsenide to control the spin, such as electron spin resonance, methods for readouts such as spin charge conversion, and creation of square root swap gates are still relevant. It is just a matter of changing the dot architecture to using a different material. If you wish to have a refresher on any of these developments in gallium arsenide quantum dots, I've listed a few key papers in the slide. So why do we want to use graphene rather than something like gallium arsenide? Quantum dots of gallium arsenide have been very successful in the past. However, despite all the advancements, gallium arsenide quantum dots still suffer from short coherence times as a result of spin-orbit interactions and hyperfine interactions of the electron with surrounding nuclear spins. To build a scalable quantum computer, gate error should be minimized, and decoherence time should be at least 10 to the 4 times longer than the average operation time. In gallium arsenide, the large interactions with the nuclear environment cause too short of decoherence times compared to execution time for single qubit operations. Graphene is an ideal candidate to resolve these issues. It is well known that spin-orbit coupling is weak in carbon due to its low atomic weight, and because carbon exists predominantly as spin-0 carbon-12, hyperfine interaction is largely absent. This results in much longer decoherence times, addressing one of the main drawbacks to traditional spin-qubit technologies. Another very large advantage to using graphene quantum dots is the possibility for long-distance qubit coupling. It has been shown that it is possible to have a line of quantum dots and couple any two of them, not just nearest neighbor qubits, without interfering with the states of the dots between them through Klein tunneling. I will discuss this in more detail later on, but this is very important for quantum error correction as it raises the error threshold for fault-tolerant quantum computation. In addition, the spin G factor, which is material dependent, is about five times higher in graphene than it is in gallium arsenide. This means that it is possible to process an electron spin in graphene quantum dots about five times faster using electron spin resonance than in gallium arsenide quantum dots. So not only is the coherence time longer in graphene, but the qubit manipulations can be done faster as well. And to top it all off, it has been shown that graphene has an exceptionally high crystal and electronic quality. So what exactly is graphene? Graphene is the first truly two-dimensional condensed matter system discovered experimentally by the Geim Group at the University of Manchester in 2004. It is a single atom thick honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms. One of the more popular ways to create graphene flakes is through micromechanical cleavage of bulk graphite which on the surface looks nothing more than just scribbling a dark patch with a pencil and using sticky tape to remove a layer, then searching for maybe a one micron sized flake of graphene amidst a centimeter sized square of graphite. While pencil lead seems unexciting, the discovery of this 2D system introduced some surprising new physics and potential, which led to its current popularity today. Before I talk about how quantum dots are made in graphene, it's important to review a bit of solid state physics and look at some of the unique physical properties of graphene so we can understand the benefits as well as the challenges associated with this new technology. So first looking at crystal structure, many semiconductor lattices can be classified as Bravais lattices. These are lattices which you can start from one atom and using a set of unit vectors can tile the entire lattice. In other words, the lattice looks the same when viewed at every point. Some common examples of 3D Bravais lattices are face-centered cubic, body-centered cubic, or simple cubic structures. Graphene, however, has a honeycomb lattice, and this is not Brave. A honeycomb lattice has a two-atom basis, typically denoted atoms A and atom B. The honeycomb can instead be viewed as two triangular Brave sublattices. This is what gives graphene many of its unique properties. With there now being two unique sublattices, electrons now have an additional degree of freedom corresponding to which sublattice they belong to what is referred to as a sublattice pseudospin. 
This unique crystal structure in turn provides graphene with a very unique energy band structure. Before we talk about the band structure of graphene, it's first important to introduce the idea of a Briouin zone. A Briouin zone is a uniquely defined primitive cell in reciprocal space, represented by the wave number K. It is the reciprocal space analog to the Wigner site cell in real space. So with that in mind, taking a look at the bottom right diagram, we can see a depiction of the energy band diagram of graphene in reciprocal space of one Briouin zone. We can see that the valence band and conduction band touch at the rack points commonly referred to as K and K prime, which lie at the corners of the hexagonal Briouin zone. From this, we can also see how there is a two-fold valley degeneracy around the points K and K prime. This degeneracy creates problems and will be addressed in more detail later on. Finally, probably the point of most interest is that it has been shown that in the vicinity of these Dirac points, energy depends linearly on the wave number, similarly to a massless relativistic particle. In these low energy cases, close to K and K prime, the honeycomb lattice gives rise to new quasi particles, accurately described as massless Dirac fermions. This phenomenon results in the possibility for Klein tunneling, which is the interband transition, for example, from conduction band to valence band of a massless Dirac electron across a barrier. This may just seem like regular quantum tunneling. However, it can be shown through conservation of the pseudospin that when one of these massless Dirac electrons is at a normal incidence with a potential step, there is perfect transmission of the particle through the barrier without evanescent waves, as if the barrier was not even there. This interesting phenomenon later proves to be both a boon and a bane. Naturally, there are several challenges involved in the fabrication of graphene quantum dots. First of all, the creation of quality graphene flakes in and of itself is quite difficult to do reliably and on a large scale. As I mentioned before, most samples are obtained using micromechanical cleavage of bulk graphite. This allows samples of around 100 microns, which is good enough for most research purposes, but can be an issue for scalability later on. The most promising solution to this issue is the development of new epitaxial techniques, which would allow us to grow quality graphene rather than search for it. Graphene being a zero-band overlap semi-metal also proves to be an issue, because in traditional quantum dots, we can tune the energy levels of the dot by just changing its diameter. However, with graphene lacking a gap in its energy spectrum, it becomes difficult to tune the dot. Klein tunneling, which again is the ability of massless direct fermions to make perfect interband transitions across a barrier, makes it very difficult to confine particles, which is an essential characteristic of quantum dots. And finally, in the case of having two coupled graphene quantum dots separated by a barrier, we want to be able to couple the two electron spins in these dots together through exchange coupling, which would allow us to create two qubit gates and would be sufficient to allow the generation of all quantum gates required for universal quantum computation. However, this exchange coupling is based on the Pauli exclusion principle which allows for electron hopping between dots if the electrons are in the spin singlet state with opposite spins, but not in the spin triplet state with parallel spins. However, this is only the case if there is a single non-degenerate orbital level. In the case of graphene, the valley degeneracy shown earlier provides a two-fold orbital degeneracy around the k and k prime points, and this makes the electron spin coupling very difficult. There have been several attempts to create dot architectures which overcome these challenges. The main architecture I will focus on in this presentation was the one presented by Trezettel in 2007, which was one of the first proposed solutions to the previous challenges. It has been shown previously that using a graphene nanoribbon with two gate contacts and two tunnel barriers can be used in order to successfully achieve confinement. Each of these cells constitutes one dot, and the picture on the bottom right of the slide is a diagram of a double dot structure. By tuning the voltages applied to the barriers, it is possible to create bound states within the dot, and voltage applied to the gates connected to the graphene itself can be tuned to shift the energy levels of the dot. The picture in the bottom left shows the bound state solutions to two different sized dots. The shorter dot has further spaced energy levels, as expected. They've also shown that by doing a slight modification to this architecture, the valley degeneracy can also be lifted. By terminating the edges of the nano ribbon with semiconducting armchair boundaries, the valley degeneracy is lifted. While this seems very simple, in practice it can be quite difficult to get nicely ordered boundaries. The diagram in the center of the slide shows the difference between armchair and zigzag boundaries. 
Notice the pattern of termination on the left and right sides of each ribbon. With the value degeneracy lifted, this architecture is also able to take advantage of the long distance qubit coupling discussed earlier. This phenomenon is based entirely on client tunneling. So although it was a challenge before, it is a key component in creating universal two qubit gates. To reiterate again, this long distance qubit coupling allows two distant qubits to become coupled. Amazingly, it has been shown that the coupling strength between two qubits in these nano ribbons depends very weakly on the distance between them. By coupling these qubits and then decoupling all of the intermediate qubits by detuning, the ones that are coupled can be manipulated without changing the states of any of the intermediates. The figure in the bottom right of the slide depicts what's been called a qubit piano, which is a nano ribbon of multiple quantum dots. The different colors represent pairs of coupled dots. The other picture shows the energy bands for a double dot setup. A single bound state, represented by a straight black line, is shown in the conduction band of the left dot, and two bound states are shown in the conduction band of the right dot. The two dots are coupled via the continuum of states in the valence band of the central barrier, which are allowed transitions in graphene because of Klein tunneling. Many investigations after the 2007 Trisadal paper and continuing on to today are involved with developing new graphene quantum dot architectures, which will be able to surpass the previously mentioned challenges as well as confer additional possible benefits. Some architectures that have previously been explored, such as disks in single and bilayer graphene and substrate modulated graphene, involve using electrostatic gates rather than armchair boundaries to lift the value degeneracy and successfully confine the particle. Graphene remains to be an exciting new model, both in the quantum computing world as well as in the creation of other electronic devices. With it being around just 10 years now since it was first reported, the rapid progress made in the field thus far can be expected to continue, giving rise to new and exciting possibilities for universal quantum computation.